Hey, Jeffrey Craner here. Two quick things. First, we could not make this show without the support of our members. As a thank you for your support, members get some really cool rewards like bonus episodes, exclusive merch, and maybe even your name in an episode of Night Vale. And right now, as a special limited time offer, we are sending all of our $10 and higher members a sticker sheet with Kate Leth's original Boy and Girl Scout badge designs, plus two new exclusive badges. Sign up as a $10 member or higher before May 11th to get these stickers, plus all of the other great rewards. More info at welcometonightville.com slash membership. Second, our latest Nightville script collections, The Buying of Lot 37 and Who's a Good Boy, come out in just two weeks. These books have every episode from years three and four of the podcast, plus our live shows, The Librarian and The Investigators, plus behind-the-scenes commentary from us and our collaborators, plus brand new illustrations by Jessica Hayworth. You were probably thinking, hey man, that's a lot of really awesome stuff. I have to order those books right now. And you are right. Head over to welcometonightville.com slash books and pre-order your copies today. Or go to your local bookstore on May 14th to get them in person. And hey, Donka. Hot singles in your area are staring into the forest and grinning absently. Welcome to Night Vale. Astronomers are frantically trying to determine why a chunk of the moon is missing. Ragged and greedy, like a slice removed from a pie by hungry hands rather than a civilized serving utensil, the gap in the moon has been baffling professional sky gazers for weeks. Fun fact, did you know a group of astronomers is called a commotion? Astronomers believe the moon could be eroding because people have stopped believing in it, like ancient Roman polytheism. Others have theorized that the moon was damaged by enemy ships in the ongoing blood space war. But people on the internet have countered that this is part of the Mandela effect, and that that piece of the moon has always been missing and we're collectively misremembering. Like how those beloved picture book bears that we all remember as the Berenstein bears have, by all physical evidence, always actually been spelled the Dog Pound Boys. Boys with a Z. Because of the 2016 city ordinance that proclaimed that anything can be true, if you say it loud enough, astronomers are forced to consider all sides. I don't know any astronomers, but I do know a scientist. My husband Carlos has been the leading scientific mind in Night Vale since we started dating almost six years ago. Carlos says that he has been studying an interesting meteorite he found out in the sand wastes and scrublands beyond Night Vale. He believes this particular rock is a piece of the moon. Standing before a giant wall of blinking lights, flickering screens, and intermittent beeps, Carlos determined that this piece of the moon broke off only one month ago. But this is impossible, because no one can remember seeing the moon breaking apart in the sky. Well, maybe we were all asleep when it happened, I told Carlos as I dabbed away a small crumb from a cheese danish that had gotten stuck in his beard. Oh, fun fact? Carlos grew a beard, and I have never liked beards on men, but now I do. It's gotten two thin silver racing stripes down the chin, and the hair is so soft. We've been married over two years, and every day I fall more in love. Oh, right, the moon. Okay, good God. Always with the moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Carlos has been studying an unusual number of empty homes and businesses about town. He noticed that the houses on either side of us are completely empty. But he didn't remember them being empty before. He remembers us having neighbors, but he couldn't name a single thing about them. He believes this might be related to the damaged moon. 
whatever happened a month ago to the moon immediately caused us all to forget it, because something in our timeline changed. Carlos said, perhaps we are not forgetting people and events, perhaps they never existed at all. His eyes were cloudy with pensive thought, and I touched his furry cheek and said, you'll save us, hon, I know you will. He smiled and asked if I'd be willing to reach out to archaeology professor Harrison Kipp again. Carlos uh, had been communicating with Kipp about this very issue, but now emails to Harrison keep bouncing back, and his phone number is no longer in the phone company's database of working numbers. I laughed and said, Carlos, I don't know who Harrison Kipp is. Carlos looked worried and said that he wasn't sure he did either but he felt like he should. Protesters have organized a sit-in in front of City Hall, demanding an end to the blood space war. The city council, seeing the crowd of about 150 people gathered around the front entrance of their building, took immediate action. They announced they would be taking a long-planned family vacation to the Badlands National Park in South Dakota until this whole protest thing runs its course. We don't believe South Dakota actually exists, the single-bodied, multi-voiced council said. When you look at a map, it seems like it exists, like it's just right there when you look at it, and it's between two other identical states, so it would make more sense for it to be there than not. Anyway, this feels like a great time to take the kids to see Mount Rushmore. As the city council said this, several small, childlike heads emerged from the city council's singular body and screamed in happy unison. Or terrified unison. Mm, it's hard to get an emotional reading on screams. The organizer of the protest is 20-year-old Nightvale Community College student Basima Bashara, whose father, Lieutenant Fakir Bashara, returned home from the Blood Space War three years ago. Basima greeted her father's return with joy, but that joy has since been replaced by confusion and pain. Let's hear Basima's story in her own words. Time no longer works correctly for my father. I understand time does not work correctly for many people in Nightville, but it had always worked correctly for him before the war. In December 2015, he returned home after 11 years of serving our city, our country, our planet, and a war that still makes no sense to me. I was six when he volunteered for service. He was 30. 11 years later, when he returned home, I was 17. My father was 19. He did not remember joining in the war, nor having a daughter, nor meeting his wife. He is a teenager, like I was. I no longer am a teenager, but my father still is. He has stayed 19 years old. Time no longer works correctly for him. My mother, Tahira, raised me. She expressed reticence about the band I started, the music we played. She grounded me when my grades slipped and shouted at me when I told her I had a girlfriend. But she came to love Marina and more. My mother came to understand us both as people, as women, not as rivers to be dammed or levied. My father's return has been especially hard on her because she is 45 and her husband is a 19 year old stranger. You probably know what it's like to have a father. To have a man much older than you who changed your diapers or watched your diapers being changed. Who taught you to speak or ride a bike. Who helped you develop as a human from an animal, from a larva, from the simplest squirming wad of meat into an adult. That father will always be a father, not a friend, not an equal, a father. You probably do not know what it's like to see your father at your age, to talk with your father when he is also barely an adult, 
to have your father lonely and inquisitive think of you as his only friend in the world while you look to him for guidance and love. But he is incapable of both, at least not in the way you need to be guided and loved. It took two years for Fakir to open up about the war, and it still makes no sense to him nor me. The blood space war requires constant shifts through time, through wormholes, to change lost battles into won battles, to undo what has already been undone thousands, millions of times over. The future does not look like a blank page, it looks like a tattered sheet of paper, grayed and frayed from countless transcriptions and erasures of history. Battles are won and then undone through time travel. We lose our lives and then regain them by traveling backwards and fighting again. We are winning the war by perpetuating the war. Last month, the Polonians attacked our Earth. I am sure of it. The only evidence is our broken moon. I believe the general undid this attack with time travel and this has changed our reality, changed who was born, who ever lived in the first place. People are disappearing because they will have never existed. People think we're crazy for protesting. I'm 20 and my father is still 19. I'm not crazy. My mother, Tahira, is not crazy. We are angry. Our next protest is scheduled this afternoon at the corner of Earl and Somerset by the dog park near the Ralphs. Not sure what Basimo was referring to. That's an empty lot by the Ralphs. There was word of a dog park to be built there many years ago, but it never materialized. <clears throat> Let's have a look now at local news. Earth Sciences Professor Simone Brigado announced today that she is scrapping all textbooks and lesson plans at the community college in favor of organized prayer to a god named Huntokar. Several students and parents argued against such an extreme divergence from core curriculum in favor of fringe religious practices, but college president Sarah Sultan supported her staff member by saying, Cut Simone some slack. She doesn't even teach classes. She is a transient who lived in a storage closet inside the Earth Sciences building for 20 years. The only reason she has the title of professor is because of antiquated squatters' rights laws. Brigado donned rabbit furs and an old bicycle frame wrought into the vague shape of antlers and began spray painting the Fibonacci sequence onto cars in the college parking lot, all the while singing a ballad about clocks. The Intergalactic Military Headquarters released their first quarter earnings statement this week. Investors were displeased to see that each of the board members of the privately owned space defense contractor had purchased 125-foot yachts and NFL franchises. But those fears were quickly allayed by the announcement of layoffs of more than 5,000 employees. Stock prices for the intergalactic military soared to an all-time high this afternoon at $490 a share. Senior Strategic Advisor Jameson Archibald said the intergalactic military has no actual earned income. 100% of their gross is from venture capital. Archibald said, some investors keep asking how we plan to monetize our military, which is a stupid question, man. I mean, look at this Patek Philippe watch I bought. It's encrusted with 10 pounds of diamonds, and the watch face was made using an actual piece of the Sistine Chapel. We are doing fine. Archibald added that the intergalactic military is developing an app and a subscription service that allows people to engage in celestial warfare anytime they want for only $12.99 a month. All right, listeners, I heard back from Basima, and she said I was right. There is no dog park. Of course I was right. If I knew there was a dog park being built in this town, I would have reported it immediately. Carlos and I have a dog. 
His name is Aubergine because he is purple and European, and Aubie is adorable and we love him dearly. I mean, I wasn't into the idea of having to care for a dog, but Carlos strongly urged this case one morning over breakfast when he said, I think we should get a dog. And 20 minutes later, we were leaving the SPCA with our adopted pet. <clears throat> Basima said she was positive there was a dog park next to the Ralphs, but when she arrived at the corner of Earl and Somerset, it was all empty lots. To be honest, I don't remember her mentioning a Ralphs before because I would have corrected her. There's never been a Ralphs affiliate in Night Vale. This is what Basima had to say. Um, hang on, let me just insert the tape I used to record her. And there we go. If a person never exists, did they disappear? If you never knew them, can you miss them? My father spends most of his days playing basketball with friends he met at the rec center. He is 19 years old and trying to escape a decade of inescapable trauma from warfare. I asked him who my mother was. I grew up with only my uncle Omar and did not know my parents until my father returned from the war. The cure did not remember my mother. He did not remember his marriage or my birth because it has not happened yet in his timeline. I asked what if mother doesn't exist at all? What if the general's time traveling has altered our lives so much that my mother was never born and you can never meet her? My father, the teenager, said, if I never met a woman I do not know, I will not miss her. I'll meet another woman. I asked, what if I am never born? My dad said, Bazzy. He hid his tears and then he hugged me, but it was not the hug of a father and daughter. It was the hug of a son and mother. He buried his head into my shoulder and sobbed, repeating, Bazzy, Bazzy. And I comforted his heaving head with my palm. I said, Father, Fakir. I think I shall no longer exist soon. I think I... Oh, okay. Oh, sorry for the dead air listeners. I was playing a recording of an interview I did. Wait. Nope. I just checked. There's no tape in the player at all. I thought I had been talking with... Ah. Ah. What I've been talking to. Maybe it was my husband Carlos reporting on his findings about the damage done to our moon, or. Or maybe it was nothing at all. <clears throat> well, let us forget that we forgot and go now to the weather. Keep our silence Oh, I feel it too right in my chest I wish that I could put it in a sentence I wish that I could open up your head And rip out the things that I see make you nervous
have an update on the Blood Space War, Night Vale. John Peters says his brother has returned home again. When he left a month ago, James Peters was 22 years old, but he is now in his 70s, which is the age he should be. John held his brother tightly, crying in gratitude and relief that his own family could return to some kind of normalcy. James, at first, was heartened to see John again, to see his home again, and to learn that he and the General had thwarted the Polonian attack on our planet. But his tearful smile drifted slowly downward, an evening shadow overtaken by night. Upon James's face now was the sudden knowledge that he had made a grave error. James looked around Nightvale, seeing empty lots and homes, abandoned buildings, and sparse streets. According to James, thousands of people have gone missing from Nightvale because they never existed or never moved here in the first place. The General had leapt in time to successfully stop the Polonians from ever reaching Earth, but the change in the timeline caused Nightvale to change too. Listeners, this may seem strange, but perhaps there are people you once knew, family you once lived with, places you were in, all of which are gone and without your knowing. I have tried hard to think of any memory, of any experience or person I have lost in the last month, but... I can think of none. I told James Peters that perhaps the change in timeline did not matter if no one knew what they had lost, if no one noticed any change. James said, Cecil, I just don't know. I don't know. Maybe if we had a scientific perspective on this, we could better understand how this is affecting us as a community. And I said, I didn't know any scientists. Not personally, anyway. There's the strange woman who lives in the storage closet at the community college. I suppose we could ask her. The important thing is that we are safe. And that another veteran has returned home. And it is another beautiful day in Night Vale. Stay tuned next for Conspiring to Love, our new relationship advice show, which as a lifelong bachelor sounds like something I should check out. Good night, Night Vale. Good night. Welcome to Night Vale is a production of Night Vale Presents. This episode was written by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner and produced by Disparition. The voice of Night Vale is Cecil Baldwin. The voice of Basima was Ali Chan. Original music by Disparition. All of it can be found at disparition.info or at disparition.bandcamp.com. 
This episode's weather is Shake by Wednesday's Wolves. Find out more at wednesdayswolves.com. Comments, questions, email us at info at welcome to nightvale.com or follow us on Twitter at Night vale Radio or tell a horse your darkest secret. Check out Welcome to Night Vale for more information on volumes three and four of our illustrated book collections out in just two weeks. Today's proverb, nothing lasts forever, is a phrase with two meanings and they're both true. Hey there, YouTube listener. It's me, Joseph, or Jeffrey. I don't remember which one I am. If you love this show and want to help us keep making it, the best way to do that is to join our membership program. Our members get exclusive bonus episodes and merch, behind-the-scenes director's notes from me and Jeffrey, and even characters named after them in the show. Learn more at patreon.com slash welcome to Night Vale. They say you shouldn't meet your heroes. I'm Joseph Fink, and I'd like to introduce you to I Only Listen to the Mountain Goats, the show where I meet my hero and have conversations about songwriting, art, and life. This podcast is going to be weird for me because I'm proud of what I do, but I always try to change the subject if people tell me that my stuff is good. (laughs) I Only Listen to the Mountain Goats. Find it wherever you listen to podcasts.